Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and I'm here with the Netbook Navigator Nav9 tablet. Um, first of all, I just wanted to show you a quick uh, look. It comes with a case. It's uh, sort of a checkered pattern. Um, I'm not sure if it's vinyl or what, but uh, it's not really the sort of case that functions as a stand. It sort of wants to fall over if you try to stand it up like that, but you can sort of do that. So let's take a closer look at the tablet itself. The uh, tablet, which I'm struggling to fit on the screen here, um, is a 8.9 inch display with a bezel around the sides. It's all plastic. The case is plastic. The um, screen is plastic. And you can see it's uh, pretty reflective here. Uh, but when you turn it on, it doesn't look too bad. Um, I think I'm resuming from sleep here as opposed to doing a cold boot. But you'll see notebook. <laughs> One of the things I find funniest about this is it says notebook, even though it doesn't have a... Uh, lid, it doesn't have a keyboard. It's a uh, slate style PC with basically the same components that you would find inside a typical netbook, uh, meaning it's got an a Intel Atom processor, uh, one gig of RAM. Uh, this version runs Windows 7 Home Premium. It's also available with Windows 7 Professional or Ultimate, uh, although those will cost you more. It's also available without any operating system at all. Uh, this version has a, uh, one gig of RAM, 16 um, Actually, this version has two gigs of RAM and a 16 gigabyte uh, solid state disk. It's available with two gigs. It's available with uh, additional storage. Again, those things will set you back some extra money. Um, around the sides, you can see we've got two USB ports here and a power uh, port, uh, mic and headphone, an adapter, which you can use. You can plug in this component, which will let you do VGA and Ethernet. Power on the top. Another USB port for a total of three SIM card and SD card slots. Uh, this version doesn't have 3G, but that is another option. And uh, pretty much nothing on the bottom. Now, you'll notice there's also a large vent on this side. And I found that air pretty much blows through that all the time. So if you hold the tablet with your hand over that vent, you're going to feel it. Um, it can get kind of warm at times. It also uh, tends to be a little noisy. I mean, not ridiculously loud, but if you're in a quiet room, you'll notice it. Uh, there are some other vents on the top and on the back, but you don't tend to feel a lot of airflow going through those. It's the one on the side that's really the most uh, active. There's an access panel on the back of the unit. Uh, if you remove the three screws here, uh, I'm not entirely sure what you look at. I think it might be a battery or something along those lines that's hidden underneath here. Um, there's a sticker that says warranty void if removed. Um, the folks at Netbook Navigator say that that's not a violation of any U.S. law, even though uh, we saw instances with netbooks and other models in the past where um, they said warranty void and then later had to retract that. Um, and part of the reason for that is because removing this does not actually provide you with access to the RAM, the hard drive, the things that would be easy to upgrade. You're going to have to disassemble the whole thing to upgrade those. And instead, Netbook Navigator says you've got a 30-day window when you purchase this. If you want to get an upgraded model, you can uh, do that. So let's take a look at some of the tablet functions here. Um, it does run Windows 7 Home Premium, which means that there are some touchscreen optimizations. Uh, for example, when I tap the screen here, you get a little icon to pull up a keyboard. The keyboard is resizable. Oop. And I can make it go away, just like magic. Uh, this is a resistive touchscreen display, which means that you want to use a fingertip or a stylus. Um, you can press down, but you have to press pretty hard, and it's not that accurate if you want to use your uh, fingers. Uh, let's make that go away. And pull up a web browser. And then show you how I would enter a URL. I think for some reason it took us to lilliputing.co instead of .com. Uh, but let's go ahead and just click on that. And so here we have the web page uh, loaded up pretty well. And since I'm using Internet Explorer, it's not usually my preferred browser, but it does include the optimizations that let you do things like scroll uh, just by flicking your finger. And scrolling looks pretty good. Um, this is a multi-touch display, so you can also zoom by using two fingers. 
The zooming's not quite as smooth as it would be on something like an iPod Touch or a Google Android phone, but, you know, it does, it does allow you to zoom in and out without having to resort to uh, pressing a separate button uh, to control the zoom. Now, works pretty well in landscape mode on most web pages. There's no accelerometer, which means that if I rotate to the screen, nothing will happen. Um, I created a shortcut here to the Windows Mobility Center so that I can rotate the screen by tapping a button. And so now we're rotated and trying to fit the whole thing on the camera. Um, and again, looks pretty good on a website like mine. I don't have a very wide content column. It's about 500 pixels. The screen's about 600 pixels wide, so that's not too much of a problem. However, where'd the rotate go? And now you'll see we're actually holding it upside down. Let's rotate again. Not that it really matters that much, but... Let's go to the New York Times website. So as you can see, it sort of takes a little while to enter text that way. Um, it's not the sort of thing I would want to spend a lot of time typing on, but you know, for doing a URL, it's really not that bad. I'm also just using one finger right now. You might be able to use two if you uh, get a little bit faster at it. Okay, so again, you know, New York Times website looks pretty good when you're in landscape mode, but when you move to portrait mode, because we're looking at a 600 uh, pixel wide screen, you're actually going to lose, it's going to cut off words at the end of the column because the column on the New York Times website is actually a little bit longer. So you either have to scroll from side to side, which I'm having trouble doing right now. Uh, I could always do it with these bars. So you can scroll from side to side and up and down, or you could zoom using two fingers. For some reason, zoom's not working right there. There we go. So you could zoom in, but then that's gonna change the uh, the font to something, um, you know, below what it was intended to be. So it is a little bit harder to read. Um, it's not too bad, but you know, you have to make some, some compromises here because of the low resolution of the screen if you wanna hold it in uh, portrait mode, which seems like a more comfortable, more book-like way to, to hold it if you want to read something like a newspaper. Um, but overall, I think that the tablet really works better in, uh, in landscape mode. So here we are in landscape mode. Um, if you don't like the keyboard, you can also change the input method to handwriting recognition. And as you can see here, it really, you know, I probably should have grabbed a stylus here because I'm hitting all sorts of things not quite perfectly. And um, that's probably my biggest complaint about the tablet is that um, it's just not as easy to use. So there you go, you can you know, enter text that way. I'm having a little bit of difficulty. My handwriting is also awful though. I think other people might have a better chance. Um, but it's not that easy to hit the things that you're trying to hit with your fingertip or even with a stylus. Um, that said, I think a resistive touchscreen display really works a lot better than a capacitive display when you're using uh, Windows 7 Home Premium because at least you're not trying to hit some fine item like the minimize bar with a thumb, which I've had problems with on uh, other devices. Um, now, one of the biggest problems I've also had here, though, is at times when I put the tablet to sleep and then resume from sleep, some of those touch optimizations just stop working. I tap on text areas and no keyboard comes up. Um, or, for example, if I want to uh, go to the home screen, normally you tap and hold and that gives you a context menu, just like right-clicking with a mouse. After resuming from sleep, that doesn't appear. So, you know, the, the experience isn't perfect, um, but overall, you know, performance is similar to what you would expect from a typical netbook with an Intel Atom processor. Uh, the difference is there's no keyboard, which makes text entry uh, more difficult. And um, at times, these touch optimizations that are made to uh, deal with that just don't work as well as they should. So uh, there's a you know brief review. Check out lilliputing.com for more information about the Netbook Navigator Nav9 tablet.